new tires on my T-Max for over two weeks without it leaving the garage. That should never happen, so I got on Google Maps and looked for somewhere different to ride. I quickly realized that I have now traveled to everywhere on the Delmarva Peninsula, that's where I live, or at least anywhere that I had a desire to go. Crossing the Bay Bridge and onto the western shore is not something that I enjoy a lot. It's faster paced and full of highways, at least until you make it far away from the Baltimore and DC metro areas. I decided that I was going to need to ride pretty far to get somewhere different, and I had one place in mind. A friend of mine got me interested in a place called Centralia, Pennsylvania years ago. There's really nothing to do there. It's basically a ghost town, but I've been mildly obsessed with its story since I first heard about it. I'm not going to try to turn this into a history video about Centralia. There are just too many great books and videos that cover it way better than I ever could. This is a video to share my ride, but I will mention a little about it when we get there. Aside from my interest in Centralia, I also wanted to ride in hilly and mountainous terrain. It's incredibly flat where I live, so it was a nice change of scenery. Shortly after entering Pennsylvania, I saw a sign about a low bridge a half mile away, so I took a quick detour to check that out. I spent about an hour lost because I was supposed to take a right on the PA Route 10. I got to this stop sign and saw 10 on the route sign and a 10 marker and thought that must be it, but it definitely wasn't. My GPS wouldn't recognize any of the numbered route names from the directions that I printed, but eventually I got some help with their other names and got back on track. When I got close to Centralia, I spotted a coal operation. Centralia was a coal mining town, as were most of the towns in the area, so I wanted to have a look around. 
I don't want you to be totally lost about why I wanted to come here, so I'll give you an abbreviated idea of what Centralia is or was. So as I said, Centralia was a coal mining town. It was officially founded in 1866, but was active for more than 20 years prior. Anthracite coal mining in itself carries a lot of hardship because of the death and danger associated with it in that era. But there was also a group known as the Molly Maguires in the coal region that were present in Centralia. The Molly Maguires were Irish Americans that denounced how mining companies treated Irish miners, and they used tactics like murder, kidnapping, and arson to allegedly protect the immigrant miners. The town's founder, Alexander Ray, was robbed and killed by Molly Maguires. Centralia peaked at a population of 2,761 in 1890, and the population stayed around 2,500 until the 1940s. Changes in the coal industry and a decreased demand for coal and miners led to a declining population. The town lost about 1,000 residents from 1940 to 1960. The most notorious incident in Centralia's history happened in May of 1962. The town was preparing for its Memorial Day celebration and burning trash in a landfill. The problem was that the landfill was located in an old strip mining area, and that led to veins of coal being ignited by the trash fire. The underground fire spread throughout the town, and the rest of the story involves a whole lot of missed opportunities and mistakes, many at the hands of government from the town to the federal level. To this day, the fire has not been extinguished, though activity is nothing like it once was. Again, it's a really interesting story in my opinion, but I'll let you research the details on your own if it interests you. To make the long story short, there was a $42 million relocation project in the 80s to move out residents when it became clear that its citizens were in danger, and that putting the fire out would be terribly expensive with some disagreement about what could even work after many failed attempts in the past. That brought a sharp decline to Centralia's population, and their homes were torn down by the government once their occupants had left. Centralia had over 1,000 residents in 1980, and by 1990 there were only 63. Eminent domain followed in the early 90s, and by the 2000 census the population was recorded as 21. Some residents tried to fight their evictions with legal battles, and some remain to this day, but the 2010 census recorded a population of 10, and I believe the current population is something like 6 or 7. Centralia lost its zip code in 2002 because of its lack of residents, and when the remaining residents are gone, their homes will be raised and no one living will occupy Centralia. Centralia has been the focus of books, documentaries, tons of YouTube videos, and even a bit of inspiration for the movie Silent Hill. There. Now you have some idea of why I rode a long way to see a town with basically nothing in it. Nearing Centralia, the road turns blood red. As ominous as it looks, the road is red because of the use of fire retardant chemicals. One section of Highway 61 was shut down and bypassed after subsidences caused bulging and cracking of the asphalt and it was deemed unsafe. It's now known as Graffiti Highway because it's covered in graffiti, and it's the big tourist attraction of Centralia, and I didn't even check it out. Since it has become a popular spot, small crowds move along the stretch of abandoned highway and off-road vehicles ride up and down it. Something about going to visit a mostly abandoned town and being around a bunch of people just goes against the whole idea to me. I live in a town of 700, and I could walk down any side street and see less people than I'd see on a Sunday on Old Route 61. But don't worry, if you want to check it out, every other visitor to the town has posted pictures or video. Centralia today is something that you could easily miss just driving through. Not much more to it than old abandoned streets and overgrown lots. There is a municipal building that they've even taken the town's name off of, and a few remaining homes in another area. I didn't stick around the homes because I'm sure their residents are tired of tourists by now.
actually rode out of town and explored some nearby areas before coming back. went to Wilburton to see a park bench that was shown in the 2007 documentary, The Town That Was. There were two benches at one point, but one was stolen, so the remaining bench was moved to a safer location with homes nearby. A bell that was part of a veteran's memorial was also moved to Wilburton due to fear of theft or vandalism. I went back to Centralia, but it seemed especially busy, so I rode through and checked out some other nearby towns. This is Ashland, Pennsylvania, which seemed to be the largest of the neighboring towns. out of Ashland as far as a town called Shenandoah before turning around. I learned very quickly that it's tough to see cars coming around tight turns with elevation changes. <laughs> All right, that went well. Then my GPS led me onto a beat up road that was washed out ahead. I got back on track, but saw another open coal mining operation and rode in to take a look and get a few pics.
Finally, I came back and spent some time exploring within Centralia. Graffiti Highway may be the area famous for spray paint, but people have taken the liberty to cover other areas of the town as well. I stumbled upon the church that was a big part of why I initially thought Centralia was so interesting. I'm not a religious person, but I like evil stuff and this makes a pretty cool story to me. It has been said that Father Daniel McDermott, the first priest of the St. Ignatius Church that once stood in Centralia, was beaten after refusing to stop speaking out about the murder of Alexander Ray, the town's founder, and related gang activity. As the story goes, he then made his way to the church and rang the bell for all to hear this proclamation. The AOH, Buckshot, or Molly Maguires, whatever they are called, are a diabolical secret society. Those that belong are a blot and disgrace to the land of their fathers as well as the land of their adoption. You will all pay for the support of those murderers, the Molly Maguires. I place a curse on all those that are responsible for this crime on their families and on their children. One day this town will be erased from the face of the earth. Only the church will stand. When you see Centralia today, this church is one of the only buildings left and it overlooks the town. That said, this is not the St. Ignatius Church that the town's cursor was a part of. And technically this church isn't even in Centralia, but the neighboring town of Aristes. I explored the streets some more, and then made my way up to the area by the Saints Peter and Paul and St. Ignatius cemeteries to look around. Here's another view of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary Church that I showed you earlier. Centralia is now a really popular spot for dirt bikes, ATVs, and UTVs. 
I could hear groups of them all over the place the entire time that I was there. I began my trip home. I would have liked more time in the area, but I knew I still had a long ride ahead of me. I left home at 5.40 a.m. and returned at 7.36 p.m., totaling four minutes shy of 14 hours. I rode 439 miles, and my only stops were to change batteries in the camera or to take a few pictures aside from finally getting a cold drink at about 3 p.m. My peak elevation was near 1800 feet, so I did make it well above sea level for a change. Thanks for watching my day trip, and if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe for more.